Let me introduce you to Joey, the shelter dog we adopted 10 years ago. I mentioned Joey because he taught me an important lesson in humility. You see, for years, Joey sneezed and sneezed. And all I did was wonder whether he might be allergic to something in the house. Until one day, I came across a study on African wild dogs that showed that these wild dogs use sneezing as a voting system or quorum. When sufficient dogs sneeze, the group changes activity. So sneezing is used to initiate action. Both my face and brain smiled when the aha moment finally struck. That dog must have thought, my human is really slow <laughs> when it comes to understanding such a simple signal. I share this story because as humans, we need to reinstall humility. You see, I'm a trained biologist with a PhD in animal communication. <laughs> Still, it took me years and a study on African wild dogs to finally understand why Joey sneezes at specific times during the day. So the interesting question here is, how did I, someone with all the credentials to be regarded as an expert, take such a long time in understanding such a simple signal? Well, I'll tell you why. Our cognitive, scientific and agrarian revolutions have disconnected us from the natural world. It has made us believe that we are separate from and better than nature. But this separateness and false sense of superiority are illusions. We are not superior, we are nature. In fact, the natural world is far more clever than we humans realize. Not convinced? Meet Otto, an octopus that kept the entire aquarium in the dark, literally for days. You see, the Sea Star Aquarium in Germany was getting blackouts during the night. And it took a highly educated staff three days to figure out it was Otto, a six-month-old octopus who was responsible for the repeated power failures. Evidently, Otto had learned to balance on the edge of his tank and shoot out the annoying 2,000-watt spotlight above <laughs> with a carefully directed jet of water. <laughs> This made me think of marine biologist Mark Nolan, a leading scientist in the field, who pointedly stated that most of the tests on octopus intelligence actually demonstrate the lack of intelligence in the researchers. An insight that's probably true for most of our quests to understand cleverness in organisms other than ourselves. I share these stories because we need to understand that we are not so smart as we think we are. Just look at the state of the world today. So what if we came down from our self-made pedestal? What if we broadened our concept of intelligence to include natural intelligence? The combination of all success factors that have allowed life to endure despite millions of years of change, disruption and major upheaval. It is the kind of intelligence that is deeply embedded in all the survival heroes that have learned what works, what can last, and most importantly, what contributes to life on Earth. For instance, did you know that these guys can help us curb climate change? Researchers have discovered that whales play a crucial role in climate regulation. You see, whales feed, adapt, and then return to the surface to breathe and poo. These poo namis are rich in nitrogen and iron, nutrients that are vital for phytoplankton. 
Phytoplankton are tiny microscopic organisms that live only in the upper layer of the water, because this is the only place where they can photosynthesize. They are so mighty that the oceans cannot function without them. That is because they turn the energy of the sun into food for all other aquatic organisms. And without the help of the whales, they cannot survive. Now, you might wonder, how is this linked to the climate? Well, through this process of photosynthesis, phytoplankton draw down billions of tons of carbon from the atmosphere and transport it deep into the ocean, where it can be stored for thousands of years. In doing so, they produce almost half of all the oxygen on Earth. They are thus not only the powerhouses of the ocean, they're one of Earth's main oxygen-producing manufacturers. And here is why the whales are so incredibly important. Whales maintain the marine circular economy in a way that sustains Earth's vital processes. They are the main caretakers of a healthy biosphere and a healthy atmosphere. In short, whales cool the climate. They give us air to breathe. A recent study of the International Monetary Fund showed that restoring the whale populations to their pre-whaling numbers is one of the best climate solutions we have today. A solution that has worked for millions of years and does not entail risky side effects like man-made technologies. And the whales are not alone when it comes to leaving a beneficial impact. Astounding scientific evidence shows that reintroducing wolves enables the restoration of degraded ecosystems. Because although a predator, wolves give much more life than they take. Their activities leave the ecosystem richer, stronger, and more resilient for the future. But that's not all the wolves achieve. The Yellowstone Wolf Reintroduction Project shows us that wolves not only impact the living world, they change the non-living world with their actions too. The wolves, though small in number, alter the geography of the land by changing the course of the river in a stunningly short time period, thereby showing us that small changes can cascade into big change in less than a decade. So in a way, the wolves give us hope because they show that fundamental transformation is possible and that it does not require generations nor great numbers to radically transform a system. In other words, the transition to a healthier, and more sustainable world is not only feasible, it's imminent. If we just like the wolves create the right enabling conditions, we can heal every place we touch. And it's not only the big animals that leave things better for the next generations. Small animals like termites do this too. Science shows that termite bioengineering prevents desertification and makes the land more resilient to climate change. These tiny insects, with a brain no bigger than a grain of sand, store nutrients, moisture and seeds inside their termite mounds, the high-rises of the insect world. In doing so, they create little oases that can sustain life with less rain, than environments without termites. So, termites green the desert. Their life generates more life, just like the whales and the wolves. You might think that these are just exceptions, but they are not. Nature holds more superheroes than the Marvel Studios can imagine. 
fungi mine rocks, plankton create clouds, foxes green the tundra, mushrooms make rain, forests foster community, pumas breed beetles, beavers hold back wildfires. These stories illustrate that there is an intelligence behind the success of the natural world. Four, the life that prevails over millions of years of selection is the life that creates conditions conducive to life. Leave it better than you found it. That is the way life works. I call this natural intelligence or NI because it represents life's logic behind 3.8 billion years of success on planet Earth. From a big history perspective, this means that the most basic foundation, the ground rule of life on Earth, is that life generates conditions that are beneficial for future life, leaving the planet better off than before. In other words, regeneration is nature's blueprint for innovation. And here is where it gets really interesting. Because once you understand how life works, you will see that sustainability is the byproduct of regeneration. So what if this insight has consequences far beyond the field of biology? What if it's actually most relevant for our economy? We all know that the existing economic situation leads to degradation, a process of decline and deterioration, while nature's primordial exchange system leads to regeneration, a process of renewal and revitalization that leaves the planet healthier, wealthier, and more alive than before. So what if this process of regeneration is exactly what is needed to reboot our economy? As its essence is about value creation, the very process that fuels our economic activity. Now, the economists in the room might experience a bit of unease, but consider this, trees and fungi established one of the first trade associations already 400 million years ago. Put simply, trees are sugar daddies <laughs> that trade their sun-derived sugars for soil-bound nutrients delivered by fungal mineral mamas. This trade association between the fungi and the trees means that together they can access far more resources than they could on their own. But that is not the main thing. Their symbiosis leaves the world better off. That is, the trade system that drives forest growth gives life air to breathe, food to eat, medicine to heal, and material to build. Even we, humans, are a product from the forest. It is where we originated. Evidence of this can still be seen in the fact that forests boost our immune system and promote our health. More than a thousand scientific studies attest to this. So imagine what we can achieve if we could found our economic logic not on the take-make-waste paradigm of today, but on the life-giving capacity of natural intelligence, regenerating environments everywhere we go. This matters, because even though we humans tend to forget, we share the same purpose as the rest of life. Life wants to live. Life wants to stay alive. Therefore, the quest before us is one of rediscovering essence. The essence of how life works 
and how we humans, just like the whales, the wolves, the fungi and all other survival heroes, can contribute to the continuation and regeneration of life. So it's time to expand our concept of intelligence to include natural intelligence. The art and science of surviving and thriving on a continuously changing planet with limited resources. It is about re-envisioning our relationship with nature and our role as humans here on Earth. Now that Joey understands that I know what it means when he sneezes, he is using the sneezing communication signal in other situations. Actually, he is now training me to give him a treat every time he sneezes. <laughs> and with a smile like that, who can resist? It goes to show that we are not the only ones teaching. Nature teaches us too. So I invite you to think, how are you learning from nature? And most importantly, how will you leave the planet better off than you found her? <laughs>